Hey, good morning. Had a long day yesterday at the fairgrounds. <laughs> um, it was a really great day for a pool. Good grief. But, um, mm, get some videos up about that after a bit. The dogs is here with us. <laughs> anyway. Don't know exactly how to start. It's last week we were talking about. Hey, Billet. Billet has a word for you. Maybe not. <laughs> last week we talked about <clears throat> about in Galatians when uh, they were saying if any other, if anyone else, even an angel from heaven, preached any other gospel from what you have received, let him be accursed. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> There are false gospels out there. There are counterfeit religions. Um, we we know that Satan goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, if you were to go look for Satan, you really wouldn't go, if you wanted a good chance of finding him, <clears throat> You wouldn't go to the inner city where there's a bunch of druggies there shooting up or drug dealers and you wouldn't go to bars and you wouldn't go to strip joints, you wouldn't go to brothels, you wouldn't go to places like that. Uh, Satan doesn't need to be there as those folks are, you know, heading to hell anyway. He doesn't need to do anything to help them along. They, they want to do bad stuff and they're doing bad stuff. And they're on their way to hell. If you were going to go look for Satan, if you want to find him, you'd have to go to places where there's people trying to do good. There's people trying to find God and trying to be good people because he wants to get them to veer off and go in the wrong direction. You go, you want to look for Satan, you go and look in churches. You look in seminaries, you look in Bible colleges. You'll find Satan there working hard. Um, like I say, there are evil, well, evil people. Yeah, we're all, we're all sinners. Some people enjoy being evil and doing bad. There are other folks who, we'll call them good people, though no one is truly good. There are good folks who want to find God, want to serve God. They want to uh, have fellowship with God and be believers. So in order to derail them, some of them, are pretty good at resisting temptations or so Satan has to resort to counterfeiting of the true gospel there are a lot of counterfeit religions out there if you're trusting in religion for your salvation it really doesn't matter what religion that you uh, are trusting in because all religions lead the same place uh, when you die. They all lead to hell if you're trusting in the religion to get you there. If you're trusting in religious rituals, if you're trusting in religious ceremonies, you're done for. What When Satan makes his counterfeit Christianity, counterfeit religions, what does he do? He tries to make it as believable as possible. You know, I don't think they do this anymore, but when they had people trained to spot counterfeit money, uh, they wouldn't have them 
study a bunch of counterfeit money. They wouldn't have them study what the counterfeiters do and different uh, techniques that counterfeiters use or anything like that. They wouldn't have them look at a bunch of fake money. What they would have them do, they would have them do nothing but study the real thing. Studying real actual money. They would know what it looked like, what it felt like, what it smelled like, probably what it tasted like. I don't know. <clears throat> they would be so familiar with it that they knew how much it weighed in their hand. They would be so familiar with it that if someone handed them a fake bill in a second, they could tell you that it was counterfeit, even if it was one of the most clever counterfeits in the world. How do you know whether you're involved in a counterfeit religion? By studying the real thing. You got to study the real thing. You got to study the Bible, find out what the true gospel is. Make sure you're not involved in a counterfeit gospel. If you're trusting in Christ, His death, you believe that He is the Son of God, He died on the cross for you, and raised on the third day, raised again, and had victory over sin and death, and He took your punishment for you, then you're, that's all you need. You're good. Let's look at the Bible. Let's see what that says. When Paul and Silas were in prison, uh, there was a jailer there, and uh, they were locked up in chains, and they were celebrating. They were, were being persecuted for the cause of Christ. They were just happy, and they were singing hymns, and they said about midnight, there was an earthquake and the doors opened and the chains fell off and the uh, jailer was getting ready to kill himself because if the prisoners escaped they were going to torture him and kill him anyway so he was getting ready to kill himself don't they said don't, <laughs> don't do yourself no harm we're all still here and uh, he came because he knew who Paul and Silas were that they were Christians and why they were in there and he came and said Let me, what must I do to be saved? And it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. There's other instances in there where someone asks what you need to do to be saved, and it answers in a similar way. Like uh, Philip ran across this Ethiopian eunuch who was reading the Bible, reading Isaiah, trying to understand it. And... Uh, he explained it to him, and he said uh, he ended up, the Ethiopian eunuch became a believer, and he said, what hinders me from being baptized? You know, here's some water, here's a body of water, why can't I be? He said, if, you know, if you believe, you can be. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. You know, he believed the whole story of the gospel, that Christ died and everything, so he was baptized. It's, it's a simple thing. You don't have to trust in Jesus and anything else. If you're trusting in Jesus and I have to dress a certain way or and I have to do certain religious ceremonies, those are doctrines of devils. It's Christ and Christ alone that saves you. One of the things Satan does, <clears throat> he tries to remove Christ from having direct contact with us. Uh, tries to put somebody in between. We learn from the scriptures that now Christ is our priest. He is our personal high priest. We can go directly to Jesus. And in Satan's counterfeits, he will put somebody in Christ's place and lead you off on the wrong path. He's our confessor. He's our advocate that will go to the Father on our behalf. And there's no human that can do that. You just need him, no earthly human, as a go-between. 
that's just another sign that's a sign of a doctrine of a devil or a false faith is if you have if you have to go through another human being to get your forgiveness another human being is just not in the chain that you go through for your confessions or your forgiveness of sins I know a lot of good people a lot of good people are in different religions and their families have been in those for generations maybe even centuries before they came over from the old country and it's hard to think of all that great tradition being wrong or all those generations of family being deceived and I'm not saying some of them weren't saved because it's possible to be in these institutions where they teach these false things and be saved because I know some that are saved but they are saved in spite of them being there rather than being saved because they're there. Uh, anyway, I'm just trying to get you guys to read your Bible. Trying to get you guys to understand what it means to be a Christian. You don't have to be a religious nut, Jesus freak, whatever they used to call them. Just believe the truth, trust in the Lord. That, uh, He's God, and He died for you. He took your punishment, you know, and trying to make you aware that Satan is very ancient and crafty, and he knows more tricks than we'll ever know in our short lifetime to trip you up and get you on the wrong path so you end up keeping company with him in hell. Uh, if you get mad at me because I'm saying something bad about a religion you're involved with, I'm sorry. Show me in the Bible where I'm wrong. All right.